In today's video, I'm going to break down absolutely everything that you need to know about the American Staffordshire Terrier. Welcome back to The Canine Show. If we're just meeting, I'm Will. I'm a behaviourist and I'm the founder of Femrear Wild Dog Food. A fully grain-free, extremely high quality food based on your dog's ancestral diet that we sell at amazing prices and deliver directly to your door as and when you need it. And on this channel, I make videos just like this one to educate people all about the amazing world of our canine best friends. So if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Now the American Staffordshire Terrier has its lineage, guess where, in Staffordshire, it's kind of in the name. And if you didn't know, that is where I'm born, raised and live to this day. Now the Staffordshire, American Staffordshire Terrier came from a line of dogs called Bull and Terriers. Now back in the day here in the UK, uh, blood sports like bull baiting and things like that were completely legal and dogs like old English bulldogs were often used as part of that. Now eventually when those horrible blood sports became illegal people still wanted to see those kind of sports but they had to move them underground and make them much less of a huge town wide spectacle. So the sports then kind of became things like um, dog fighting or ratting in a pit that could be hidden away from the authorities. Now, because these sports were buried underground and they became a different type of blood sport altogether, breeders of the dogs at the time wanted to create a better dog for those sports. So what they did was they mixed those old bulldogs with terrier dogs of the time to create a range of different bull and terrier type dogs. Now, these bull and terrier type dogs became the stock for things like bull terriers, Staffordshire bull terriers, American pit bull terriers and the Amstaffs. Now, the dogs of that time were quickly made their way over to the US. Now, after these things all started to divide, these dogs started to take on their own journey to becoming on their own variation of the Bull and Terrier, and that includes the American Staffordshire Terrier. Now, as beautiful as the American Staffordshire Terrier is today, and there is different variations, of which I've done loads of video comparing them to the Staffies and to Pit Bulls, etc., they are their own breed and registered as such. Now, in terms of the temperament of the American Staffordshire Terrier, it is actually very similar to the Staffordshire Bull Terrier we see today here. Now, the American Staffordshire Terrier is a much rarer breed because people in the UK tend to kind of show their pride through the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And it's only really the difference in their size that is uh, the clear difference in the breed as a whole. In terms of temperament, like I say, they are very similar as they are an energetic dog. They're also very playful, but they're loyal and loving, confident and eager to please, really wanting to just be with their families, help their families where possible and work alongside them. They're an excellent all-round dog in that perspective. Now, they do have a very high prey drive due to the terrier that's in their lineage, like I discussed earlier, back from the blood sport days. But that doesn't necessarily spill over into any kind of aggression. They're actually much more known to be a very relaxed, gentle, loving dog that is just a little bit more energetic and playful. Now, the average life expectancy of an American Staffordshire Terrier is between 12 and 15 years when properly cared for and fed a good quality diet. Now, to help owners ensure they're giving their dogs the highest quality diet possible, that's exactly why we produce Femrear Wild Dog Food. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a completely grain-free diet based on your dog's ancestral requirements. And you can find out more, and there's links in the description box below. Now, in terms of training your American Staffordshire Terrier, they are a very trainable breed, and like the Staffy here, are one of my favourite breeds to work with. They are very eager to please, but they are also very energetic and playful, especially as puppies. So at that stage, concentration levels tend to be a little bit lower than other breeds that are also eager to please, like the Labrador or the Golden Retriever, which is why you don't necessarily see them rank so highly in easy to train dogs. Now, however, if you can get through that uh, puppy stage, breaks training down into short, sharp, more enjoyable, playful sessions, you can have a dog that's capable of incredible feats of obedience, as well as different things in the working environment, or fun sports like agility or obedience competitions. Now, that high prey drive we discussed earlier from the terrier in them can be a little bit of a deterrent in terms of training, and it's something to be aware of, especially with things like recall if you're out and about, if they spot a squirrel or a small animal, that recall has 
to be amazing. Otherwise, that Terrier might just get the better of them and slip into some independent mindsets and them to decide to ignore you. But if you can harness those more Terrier prey drive energetic skills, like I say, absolutely fantastic dogs to train. Now, they can grow about 48 centimeters high, which is around and around 36 kilos. That's for kind of a top end male tends to be around that mark, with the females being a little bit shorter and lighter. They have a very smooth coat that can be any color, solid part or patchwork colors. And they're very athletic dogs. They have that lovely, excellent combination of strength, muscle and athleticism, typical of the Bull and Terrier type breeds. Now they're taller and heavier than the English Staffordshire Bull Terriers, but they tend to be a little bit smaller than the American Pit Bull Terriers. Now obviously there's always exceptions to this, but that's just a kind of rough mark uh, for where you can put them in their family of Bull and Terrier breeds. They are a very easy groom to breed. They have those short, tight, flat lying, lovely coats. And to stay on top of, all you really need is probably just a quick weekly brush and then a wipe over. That'll just remove any of the shed and dead hairs that are typical with nearly every single breed. And other than that, happy days. Very easy breed to stay on top of their grooming requirements. Now their exercise requirements aren't so easy. They are high energy dogs with those Terrier mindsets that has to be drained daily. Now, if you do that well, they will settle down really nicely into loving, fun, lovely, relaxed co uh, companions in the house. But to do that, ideally, you need to have a good two hours of exercise a day broken into two one-hour walks. And as part of that, I would also encourage making sure that they have some good time to really run and stretch their legs obviously in a safe environment and again like I mentioned due to that high prey drive you need to be careful around smaller or prey animals. Now what you can do to help which is also a brilliant way to help drain their mind is to teach a good game of fetch. Now if you can teach a good game of fetch it tends to be a little bit more difficult with a terrier because they'll very happily chase but when they get there and the object's just still and not moving they can lose a bit of interest but teach a good game of fetch and for them to bring it back take them out for a good hour walk, 15 minutes of hard fetch with a frisbee or one of those ball launchers and that can really blow off some steam as well as some mental stimulation because they work. They feel like they're working with you. So as always we'll summarize by breaking down the positives and negatives so that you can decide whether they're the right dog for you. Now we'll start with the pros and that is that they are very energetic lively dogs that would be great for people that leave active outdoor lifestyles. Now they form amazingly deep bonds with all of their families uh, and they love children of all ages and they do have a good life expectancy which is always nice especially when you bring in a dog into your family as you want them to be a part of your family as your entire family grows however the cons are that like I say they do have that high prey drive which can be a little bit difficult to work with and a worry if off lead they do need a lot of exercise to truly be happy and that terrier mindset can be a little bit hard to manage for first time owners so they might not be the best breed if you've never worked or trained a dog before. Now thank you so much for watching this video. If you find the video helpful please hit that like button and if you're new here please consider subscribing so you never miss a future episode of the K9 Show.